Hello, everybody. Benga Latinji here. Welcoming you to performance management, and we are looking at budgetary control system. And beyond budgeting model is under the budgetary control as a topic in our syllabus. And when we are talking about beyond budgeting model, just like when we say something is beyond something, that means it takes a step further or higher than what it has been before or what existed before it before. So beyond Budgeting model is an advance and an alternative to the traditional budgeting to make an organization to become more agile and more proactive rather than responsive because it finds a lot of fault and issues based on research done by Hope and Fraser long time ago that traditional budgeting is not that yielding it's not yielding the effective results in a changing world that we find ourselves and therefore there is need for an agile system that could be proactive and also decentralize the budgeting system and give power to the operational managers and the like because they actually know what is going on rather than the armchair executive that budget and force it down on the other people which actually we implement it whether they like it or not this is just one among many disadvantages of the traditional budgeting system and in this video we are going to concentrate on beyond budgeting 2 model which actually has 12 basic principles and the principles are actually divided into two for better understanding beyond budgeting model has 12 basic principles and they are divided into two the first one takes care of the effective system of performance management while the other talks about the effective organization culture and behavior effective system and performer of performance management is the first break and the second half of the 12 is effective organizational culture and behavior so this tells us that we can bash the 12 basic principles of beyond budgeting model into two the first six is about the effective organizational culture and behavior and the last six is about effective system of performance management before we move on it is important that we remind ourselves of what traditional method of budgeting is and before after this video we will be going into the standard costing variance analysis so don't forget to join us by that time so we are moving on to the business of the day about the beyond budgeting model and we have a lot to actually deal with so in this video we will talk about and refresh ourselves of what budget really is types of budgeting budget budgetary control then we talk about which X is actually highly examinable 12 we'll talk about the 10 issues with traditional budget in the exams it can actually come out it has 
been hacked before and don't let them take you by surprise if again it is coming out so what are the disadvantages or the issues with the traditional methods of budgeting and what are the methods of budgeting that we initially have so we we'll remind ourselves then we go into the 12 basic basic principles of beyond budgeting model b b m so if you are with us now we would like you to comment and like when you when you like and comment beyond budgeting model that shows you us that you are actually with us now and on next video we are going to do a shout out to you calling you by your name out that you are part of us and don't forget to subscribe to g james associate channel my name is Benga olatunji fca so we have established one thing that traditional budgeting is not good enough in our changing world nowadays and that brought about the change that we now have about our budgeting system in which we can be talking about beyond budgeting model so what is budget a budget can simply be defined to be the financial and quantitative statement so a budget is a financial statement and more importantly is a quantitative statement i want to believe you agree with that and that statement must be pre-approved that is approved prior to a defined specific period future time that they they are actually looking at and there must be a goal to achieve an objective so a budget drives towards achieving an objective and it is predetermined quantitative and financial statement having reminded ourselves of that and established that types of budgets we can be talking about the functional budget in which every department compiles compile compile their organizations or departmental him and cost implication that is functional budget so it's as per function sales function production function account function and and the and the rest of the department that an organization could have then we can talk about the top down and bottom up type of budgeting and traditionally usually is top down the the big boss make a uh, futuristic uh, quantitative costs and financial for for the year ahead for the month ahead for the quarter ahead and believes that it should be implemented sometime too it could be bottom up so that means like that functional now like functional approach of a to a budget it could be bottom up in which a department and people in the department in that particular function prepare the uh, budget and present it upward we can equally have a periodic budgeting like quarterly budget and the like we can have a rolling budget a rolling budget is a continuous budget so it's it keeps on rolling as the year goes by we can talk about incremental budget don't forget we are 
just snapshotting all this because our main focus is on beyond budgeting model please don't let us forget so all these types of budgets they are in detail but we are not detailing them because our aim is totally different for this purpose and this video so if you want more of that you can check us up where we deal with types of budget in detail so we are on incremental budget that is we improve on our course this year and use it as a stepping stone for next year or next quarter depending on the specific period of time we are looking at we can have zero base budget in which we nullify everything or the experience we had this year we forget about it and build freshly for the new year to come or new quarter or new month to come as the case may be so is zero budgeting then we can have activity based budgeting activity based budgeting which is based on the activity that we believe that we will be executing so those are some of the types of budgeting that comes to mind and when we are talking about budgetary system too we must mention a budget manual a budget manual is a, a list of or a book containing instructions series of instructions about how to go about the budget maybe departmental budget or any of the types of budget that the organization may have so it's a book containing series of instructions the do's the don'ts and the like of that procedure then we can talk about master budget too when we are talking about budgetary control system we will talk about master budget don't forget one type one of the types of budget is functional budget which is departmental budget and at the end of the day as an organization we must have an holistic budget so this holistic budget is what we can term the master budget that is as an organization the totality of what we are expecting to expend is so 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 amount of money so that will be contained in the master budget meanwhile functional budget belongs to individual functions and departments also when we are talking about budgeting we must but talk about budgetary control having built up cost implication for our next assignment or activity that we are aiming at we must at the point actualize them so budgetary control deals with the aspects of comparing the envisaged or the budget now against the actual amount spent so budgetary control simply put is the comparison between what we intended to spend and what we eventually spent so having established ourselves in this topic now we are going into the critical aspects of this topic that is why did we jettison traditional budget so the 10 problems or issues that we found against traditional budgeting a question could examine that aspect why can we what can we say against traditional budgeting system and don't forget when we're talking about traditional budgeting system all those types of budgeting that we've mentioned are under traditional be it activity based 
be it zero base budgeting, be it functional budgeting, and the host of others that we've mentioned. They are traditional. So what are the issues that beyond budgeting model has come to remedy against traditional budgeting? As we go into it, it is important for us to establish it too that beyond budgeting model is a responsibility model. That is, it casts the responsibility of implementation of budgeting to the operational managers rather than the executive, the executive armchair budgeting and the like. It puts the responsibility for budgeting on those that actually are more or less on the field if we can use engineering term those that are actually relating with all those aspects of work should budget it not somebody in the office that just puts one course down and forces it on the real people that are outside doing the greater work so that is what beyond budgeting model is so it's a responsibility model is equally an agile model when we are talking in, about agile agile is uh, a term coined from the information technology industry actually it simply means that that an organization should be proactive or proactively responsive so they are fast in response responding to the fast-paced environment business environment that they find themselves so that is what agility means so beyond budgeting model is an agile model also it's uh, management transformational and uh, innovative model it's a management transformational and information innovative model and by the time we get to the 12 basic principles, we are going to find this to be very correct that beyond budgeting model is transforms actually, first of all, the management, the mindset of the organization and the environment and ensure that we can easily innovate. Innovation simply means building, making the could to become better and making the better to become best so we are more innovative so it's about beyond budgeting model has come to ask a critical question which the traditional budgeting system will not ordinarily ask so it asks a fundamental question like what value is this cost that we are about to spend? What value will it create? So it's, it discusses value creation rather than the traditional me method of budgeting that will say that it's not in the budget. We did not have it in the budget, so therefore we could not do it. No. Beyond budgeting model will say if it can create value to our customer and to us also, why not do it? So we are going to do it. That is what beyond budgeting model has come to do. Having established all these key advantages or focuses aims and objectives of the beyond budgeting model it is important to reiterate again that weaknesses were found in traditional budgeting it is very fixed and rigid it is very fixed and rigid even though there are values that could be created but because 
that cost was not initially envisaged and put in the budget. Traditional method of budgeting will not implement it and value will be eroded and the organization becomes not, um, not relevant to the environment and customer satisfaction declines. So traditional budget method or budgeting method is fixed and rigid in thinking. Also, it restrains innovation and initiative. Don't forget I've defined what innovation means. Initiative on the other hand, let's say an operational manager or a junior officer observed that if we do this, we are going to make more money and we are our customer we are going to be more satisfied with us that is initiative but he or she will not be able to implement that observation because that cost is not in the budget it was not preempted before not envisaged last year when they are preparing the budget for this year <laughs> Therefore, value creation becomes constrained and restrained by the old traditional method of budgeting. So, what are other issues found against traditional methods? It is time consuming and it is expensive. It is time consuming. I could remember when I, I was part of those that prepare budget and the like, moving from one function to the other, calling, meeting and the like, all to prepare a budget that if care is not taken, circumstance in the even next month, may overtake it that is the truth even next even next week circumstance government policy change in business environment to overturn it meanwhile we've spent executive time doing this preparing all this as much as it's good to plan please don't get me wrong and don't get the intent of beyond budgeting model wrong. It is good to plan and beyond budgeting model too is actually planning. But it's bringing more flexibility into planning, into budgeting. So the traditional is time consuming and expensive. Think about the executive time being wasted on it. Think about what those people could have been doing for the organization where why they, are, they concentrate on that. The managers and everyone, the, the print out, the emailing and the like. It costs more both intellectually, financially to the organization and especially the executive time that is being put into it also at the end of the day like i said event go over over overturn it and it becomes the budget becomes useless meanwhile so therefore it adds little or no value actually to the value chain of the organization i want to believe you will agree with me if you agree with me please put in the comment section and if you disagree put in the comment section too also and if you've enjoyed value so far don't forget to click like it is important for us to for the algorithm for youtube algorithm that you click like if you've actually enjoyed the value in this video and we are still going please we agree that we should not be having longer videos but there are so much reasons to ensure that
this video is long and we do it once and for all okay so another reason that traditional budgeting is or could be jettisoned or fought against it is that is that it fails to consider shareholders value like that junior officer as an example that for any reason in the course of his uh, work observe that if we do this thing and we spend this amount the organization can make this but if he or she presents it to his manager the more or less is going to be rejected the idea the observation as good as economically sound as it may be the proposal it may be turned down by reason of that it has not been in the budget last year not for any other reason and the wealth maximization for the shareholder is being ampered so it fails to consider shareholders value that is another critical demerit of the traditional budgeting system also it prevents fast response i want to believe you will agree with me as to that it prevents fast response because you need to ask is this in the budget or not the person that holds the budget may not even make it available there are some managers like that they say it's my budget it's my department's budget and i'm the hod so it's my budget so if it's not disclosed the content of the budget is not disclosed every other initiative is silenced so it prevents fast response also even for approval when you want to spend from the budget it must be equally be approved because you cannot spend above it even though there may be need for it and we have money in the account you may not be able to that does not mean that we should lavish money anyway but these are the practical things that we need on the field even in your business you will agree in that your organization you are you must have experienced all this also it protects spending allocated but fails to reduce costs so the first the last one we mentioned leads us to this it pre prevents us from responding fast and therefore it protects the spending allocated the hod say he or she has this cost to spend and I'm gonna spend it and the cost is not reduced even when we have at the end of the day no reason to to spend it we will spend it because it's already in the budget let's take for example a usual cost that actually can be easily affected is human resources cost allocated let's say for example training training cost if the budget has has that cost already that training so so amount has been allocated to it even some people that has no business in that particular training that that training will not have any meaningful or productive effect in their delivery to the organization or to the furtherance of their own career by themselves we just want to go for that training because the, the the training is costly so that they can finish up the cost allocated so it protects spending allocated but fails to reduce the cost oh and this is a big demerit also it discourages innovation we've said that before so i'm going to move on because of our time it focuses on sales targets and not customer satisfaction it focuses on sales targets and not customer satisfaction i want to believe you will agree with me on this too 
that the hold traditional way of budgeting has its focus on sales targets. You must meet this target. You must meet this target. Whether they like it or not, they must buy it. We must force them to buy it. We must we must just dump the, the sales in their in their warehouse and the like their warehouses and the like. And after we've done it all, what happened? The customer satisfaction drops. And you know what? If we the customer satisfaction drops, the organization actually is in trouble because it's going to affect next year's sales. And if we cannot retain our customer, we ask ourselves, you see, every time we will be paying for adverts, for publicity, just to have clients or customer patronize us. The cheapest of sales is retainership. When organizations, your customer keeps, your customers keep coming back coming by again and again to buy your products, your goods and enjoy your services is the cheapest way of sales. So it's erode that opportunity. Also, it's not effective system for implementing strategy. For my CSME student that have been following GGM's associate channel very well, you know that the peculiar way that we use here on how to define strategy. And don't forget, strategy is a profession. Strategy is actually a profession. Even though we have it as a subject under corporate strategic management and ethics. But strategy actually is a profession. There are some people that could call themselves I'm a strategist because it's a profession, just as we have accountancy as a profession. So at the heart of strategy is outward focused, is compet is competitor focused. Many times people misunderstand or mistook, if I can use that word, policy in replacement for strategy. Strategy is outward focused, where policy is internalized. Please don't forget that. So last but not the least, there's still even more to go. Let's see how we can go. Another demerit of traditional budgeting is that it's not effective system for implementing strategy that is in taking care of our competitor. It does not take care of our competitor because it always looks within. It's about our cost to do this, to do that, not about the cost implication or what we need to do to have a strategic advantage over our customer to have and increase our customer share over our competitor rather and to have increased market share of the industry so those are strategy but many times we budget for expenses and the like the how to do this how to do that transportation costs painting costs stationary costs and the like but forgetting that if our competitor should have edge above us if care is not taken they can drive us out of the market Let's quickly move on. It imposes financial control, not corporate goal, is another demerit of traditional budgeting system. It puts especially the staff members under financial control. You have this limit to spend. You must not spend above it as against what we need to do 
to achieve a corporate goal every organization has a corporate goal which every other function actually should aim at assisting to achieve but on the traditional level of budgeting financial restraint by way of control by way of forecasting is already there and anybody that brings up a new innovation or a, a new idea that could bring more value both to us, to our pocket, and to the customer, most likely the idea will be rejected at first hearing. So it imposes financial control on the populace, on the staff members, and not corporate goal, not focusing on how to achieve a corporate goal. And it is in achieving a corporate goal that organization find, finds sustainability. It does not take into consideration assets outside accounting system. And please, I will like us to pay maximum attention now. This will be the last demerit I'm mentioning, and it is critical because it encompasses all that we've mentioned before. Traditional budgeting system. Just imagine if you can measure all these points for the question. If you ask this question and you measure this, the success rate skyrockets. You agree? Its traditional budgeting model focuses on the accounting system and the accounting figures and those assets that we have within the organization. But actually, real life is in the world and outside the organization. So it does not take into consideration the assets outside accounting system don't forget when we define what a budget is we let us know that a budget is a quantitative and financial statement so what and what now are the things that does not take consideration of excellent management system have you seen something like that being budgeted for and it is critical to the survival of any organization. Excellent management system. It does not equally take cognizance of loyal customers. Loyal customers. You see, especially in the aviation industry nowadays, loyalty, loyalty card. If you travel well with them, they are going to give you more travel miles and the like and how this actually make the sales and the value chain to expand income to increase customer satisfaction to skyrocket customer retainership to be wonderful it does not take into consideration strong leadership because old traditional way of budgeting believes that those that are probably in the board, the BO, the board of directors are the, are the superhuman. But it is not. That is not to say they are not good. Yes, by the grace of God, I'm on the board of some companies. But the truth of the matter is there is no monopoly of knowledge. That is the truth and that is what Beyond Budgeting is emphasizing and brings to be strong leadership, knowledge and intellectual capital. A few seen a, a, a traditional budget that has intellectual capital budgeted for knowledge, capacity and these these are the strategic advantage or advantages 
that an organization could have and give the organization an edge or edges above far above their competitor strong strong brand strong brand hold traditional way of budgeting will not consider how strong or how weak our brand name is are we being projected outside at all if we are to mention our names among 100 buyers in our industry that is people that consume whether our services or our goods if we are to sur survey 100 of them how many of them will say first of all had heard of our name not to talk of bought our products and not to talk of they are going to recommend us to others and they are going to come back to buy all these are important when it comes to beyond budgeting model skilled people skilled people are not budgeted for are not considered traditionally but when we are talking about an agile organization an organization that is having responsibility model in form of beyond budgeting model they will have a budget for skilled people and they will give them room to actually function and thrive not about being bossed over but it's about the contribution they can bring and also the value they are going to contribute and increase the shareholders value at the end of the day so performance management beyond budgeting model now let's go into the 12 basic principles we had dealt with the 10 issues or problems or the merits or the disadvantages of going by using traditional methods of budgeting and we have a host of the types under traditional me method of budgeting that we've mentioned so now let us go into beyond budgeting model properly so as we go into it right away tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe to GGM's associate channel and don't forget to click like because of the YouTube algorithm it is important to us click like if you've enjoyed so far value for your time being here and tell others share it on the other platform comment if you are there are other expectations that you believe that we can meet so among the 12 we said that we can divide the 12 basic principles of beyond the budgeting model into two so we have then six six the first six deals with the effective organizational culture and behavior changing the mindset of within the management system within the employee system within the organization as a whole then so therefore we, we are going to talk about governance 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 is critical here to beyond budgeting model so when we are talking about governance we must talk about taking action and our values must be clear as an organization we must know the way to how will i put it to conduct and to examine and to monitor the business of our organization 
and to ensure that people that are responsible for one thing or the other actually delivered so our mission statement must be coherent with our vision statement and the plan should back it up and our objective should be well spelled out maybe i should come again governance when we're talking about governance we're talking about the, a whole lot of business administration business ethics monitoring supervising directing organization in such a way primarily governance is to ensure that everyone responsible for one task or the other actually delivered to the advantage of the organization and uh, at the end of governance is the board of directors and they could delegate to the middle level management and the like so it is important for us to actually establish that having said that another that we must talk about is taking responsibility for performance taking responsibility for performance it is very important and is one of the great strengths of beyond budgeting so managers should be responsible for achieving competitive results not for meeting the budget competitive results in form of doing better than our competitor in form of rendering our qualitative superior services rendering of services or production of goods delivery of superior qualitative goods to our customer so responsibility for performance there should be key performance indicator that every manager operational manager must have and must deliver precisely so we've spoken about governance which supervises to ensure performance management is conducted then we talk about responsibility for performance so managers are responsible to ensure that their subordinates get the job done and the board of directors should ensure that the executive and the middle level managers actually deliver as anticipated especially in their job description then delegation delegation four man four man no no one person can perform four person's job that is the truth so delegate 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 i say it again delegate people should be given the ability and the freedom to act how will you train people if you you're not given them the opportunity to first of all do it let them do it we must give allowance for error and correction of error and there is a whole lot of system and study about how to delegate who to delegate when to delegate when not to delegate so we could see that beyond budgeting model is actually beyond the traditional focus so beyond budgeting system model actually develops the mindset the culture the value of the organization for effective leadership for effective followership and for effective and robust communication from all of us as a community of organization 
So managers should be ready to delegate. The board of directors should be ready to delegate. The subordinate should be ready to take on delegated authority and do it well. That is what it entails. So they should not be controlled or constrained by the senior managers. Delegate many people, some managers actually derive pleasure in knowing that if they are not there, nothing gets done. But actually is an example of a typical leadership failure. If we are in a place and if we are not there for a day or two and nothing gets done because we are not there, it is a symptom of failed leadership. That is the truth. That is the truth. We should try as much as possible to ensure that even our organization needs us less, but on things that are of more significance. I know there is a risk in what I'm talking about, but the truth of the matter is that is how even to enhance our own value as individual. That is how to en enhance value as intellectuals, as technocrats. You must delegate and you must improve on yourself so that you, you fear no evil <laughs> about anything you side effects of other people knowing how to do what you know how to do best because that is one of the reasons people don't like to delegate so that others will not come and take their jobs but beyond budgeting is telling us to actually delegate another effective organizational culture that we need to inculcate and develop that to be the bedrock of beyond budgeting is structure. We must put structure in place. Many organizations do not have organogram, organizational shots. Many staff do not know who actually they are responsible to. In case of anything, who should they go to first of all and the like and all this leads to chaos and in a chaotic environment productivity is not enhanced and value goes down so there must be strong culture beyond budgeting actually demands structure to be put in place so Operations should be organized around processes and networks and should not be organized on the basis of departments and functions alone. So it should be around processes. Structures should be around processes and network. What follows immediately after now? That is process. Just like we are telling you that after this video, you, to, you should be anticipating that we are going to release a video on analytics, variance analysis. So that is process. Process is superior. Process has upper hand. Process pro produce expectation and increases customer satisfaction. So there must be process in place. And when we have strong processes and networks in place, it's showing that the end products will be satisfactory because part of the processes is even quality assurance is part of the process. So it assures that the, our production is solid, deep quality that we are we are putting out is solid therefore we can be assured that we are going to have a good sales and our customer will be satisfied of course our our product or services may be a bit of a premium good or the like but the truth of the matter is people are going to buy it 
if they have value for what they are paying for people are going to buy it so advocacy for structure is another we've mentioned governance we've mentioned responsibility for performance we've mentioned delegation we've mentioned structure the fifth one don't forget the first is divided into six the fifth one is coordination there must be coordination effective coordination between people within the company and this should be achieved by process designed and fast information system must be made available so there should be coordination in the organization and when we are talking about coordination let's see a coordination or coordinated system as our ourselves human human being human body is highly coordinated our hand functions independently of our leg our eyes function independently of our mouth our our brain functions independently and every part of our body functions even though there's a coordination between our brain and the spinal cord and everything works in a superb way so also an organization should be highly coordinated if there is no coordination there will be breakdown in transmission and you know what that means so we should not allow for breakdown in transmission whether due to uh, fire light outing or the like there should be coordination so coordination means communication should be effective and that's why we are talking about fast information system communication within the organization should, should spiral down and spiral up with his there should be process design we should know what will be next and we should know what will be ne next after next that is coordination it's linked to linked to structure but that is coordination then we talk about leadership leadership is the sixth among the first that we first division of the 12 basic principles of beyond budgeting model and when we are talking about leadership the senior managers should challenge and coach and they should not command and control and effectively even nowadays from the management books and the like you hardly will find new author mentioning control as part of the definition of leadership we lead and not control we lead people by showing the way we lead people by showing example we lead people by being example and that's why we're talking about coaching so the senior managers should coach let others know how to do it develop them and don't boss over them lead them let them know why we need to do what we are doing and the implication of not if we are not doing what we we are supposed to do when they know all this they can even perform beyond our expectation that is the truth and that is the greater strength of humanity so for listening to us up until this moment in the first one week that we release this video we are going to give a shout out to the first 20 people that gets to this point about the 12 basic principles and the second half of it which is about effective system of performance management so if you like you subscribe and you put in the comment section 12 basic principle put in the comment section 12 basic principle 
and you could be sure if you do this within the first week we release this video and you are among the first 20 we are going to shout out your name personally having said that so the seventh now which will be the first on the list for effective system of performance measurement as part of the 12 basic principles of beyond budgeting model is goal setting goal setting we need to set goals we need to set goals don't forget that budgeting actually is about goal setting so the goal should be to beat our competitor and not the budget so we see the difference now between the beyond and the traditional our goal should be that we beat our competitors arms down not about our internal cost not about our budget because we may need to actually project and increase our costs to beat our competitor because we need to do competitor benchmarking we need to do market research market survey and the like and this may even increase our initial cost which will be recovered soon enough at later years so we must set our goals and our goals should be about beating our competitor so therefore that means we must have strategy if you remember if you started with us you remember our definition of what a real strategy is the art of strategy is competition okay so we must have a strategy or we must set a goal then also we must formulate formulate strategy so in formulating and implementing strategy it should be a continuous process like benchmarking it's a continuous process it's not a process you do now and abandon because of costs because we are operating in a business environment now that is rapidly changing rapidly developing so we must always continue in the process of formulating our strategy and not an annual effect in events imposed by senior manager so everyone on air at every level within the organization should be strategy formulating and strategy conscious we must have our strategy that is how are we going how we want to beat our competitor so we must leverage on our strategic advantage and continuously utilize it to the best of our advantage so we need to formulate strategy we need to set goal then the third one is that we must be anticipatory in management we must be anticipatory in management don't forget this is a key when we are talking about an agile organization this is a key mentioning when we are talking about agility of an organization so management therefore should use anticipatory systems for managing strategy so when we are talking about anticipatory system there are systems that provide information about events that are anticipated in the future let's take for example we anticipated that in the nearest future let's say for example next year with our market survey with our research and benchmarking it's the whole suggest and corroborate that our competitor want to release a new product and that product is an improved product on what they initially have so it simply means if we too did not 
have a better product than that, they are going to increase their home market share. That means they are going to take part of our customer that we have before. For it not to happen, we must do something, right? Of course, yes. So that is what we meant by anticipatory management. Then we must have and be resource mindful. That is resource management. We must use our resources very well. Resources should be made available to the operational manager at a fair cost and when they are required. So resources should not be allocated to departments in the fixed budgets. Don't forget that's the disadvantage of a fixed budget. But we are talking about now making available resources for the use of those operational managers or managers generally that actually need that resource or resources. Don't forget that the whole traditional manager in the fixed traditional way of budgeting, we hone his or her budgets. We not even let the subordinates know what and what are incorporated in the budget not to make not to talk of making it available for use so agility beyond budgeting model is telling us that we must make resources available to those that need to use them as a way of resource management then we must have measurements and control as part of performance management there must be measurement there must be control so performance management and control should be based on a small number of key performance indicator which usually we call kpi not a large number of detailed reports let's say for example an organization and a manager in an organization has Let's say four basic key performance indicators in which uh, performance management or is performance management are going to be measured. And within those key performance indicators are uh, embedded the goals to be achieved by the organization. So as he or she is driving towards accomplishing a performance indicator or its performance indicator, also the value is being created automatically for the organization, for the shareholders and all the stakeholders. So measurement and control should be holistic, should not be too elaborate should be condensed so a greater work should be done in performance management then we we'll talk about motivation and rewards motivations and rewards so people should be rewarded at a company level at a business unit level people should be compared Motivation and reward should be based on competitive performance and not meeting predetermined budget targets. It should be based on competitive performance. If you do well, you are going to get rewarded. And if your motivation motivates you, you are going to be more rewarded. Okay, so reward is key. And don't forget when we are talking about reward, we are talking about carrot and stick actually. Yes, of course, okay. is carrots and stick. So we do well, we get rewarded. We do well otherwise, 
they get rewarded so reward is important and it drives accomplishment so we've spoken about the 12 basic principles which are broken into two the first part which comprises 12 is effective organization and culture and behavior and under that we have governance we have governance and responsibility delegation structure being put in place coordination and last but not least leadership then when we are talking about effective system of performance measurement under beyond budgeting model we must talk about setting goal that is goal setting and don't forget when we are setting goal is all about strategy that is beating our competitor arms down formulating the strategy that will really work anticipatory management that is looking ahead what our competitors are doing doing benchmarking market research surveying and the like for the purpose of ensuring that we retain our market share retain our profitability we retain our customer satisfaction and if possible we achieve market growth and market leadership also we must talk about measurements we must talk about motivation we must talk about reward we've spoken equally of the demerits of the traditional budgeting and because of them we have beyond budgeting model being but and among the prominent demerits of traditional method is that is time consuming and expensive little value is added even with all the time consumption and being expensive it fails equally to consider shareholders value it's all about a see in the budget not minding whether it can create value or not we've spoken about prevention of fast response is not responsive enough old budgeting system is not responsive enough it protects spending allocated but not but fail to reduce the actual cost so it encourages ownership of spending at the detriment of the organization's costs reduction it discourages innovation that you observe something that I will have a better idea to generate money does not say that the the people that can decide we buy into it on time because the costs are fixed for the time being also it focuses on sales targets with without customer satisfaction rather it focuses on sales targets not minding whether customers are satisfied or not with the product or service rendered or product being sold to them it's equally it's not effective system for implementing strategy and don't forget strategy is outward looking it imposes financial control but not corporate goal and when the corporate goal is not achieved we know the resultant effect we've discussed it we spoke about this ultimately that it concentrates on the accounting systems and the figurative and neglects the consideration for outward assets and what are the outward assets and wealth of of nation if we can use it we will talk about excellent management system lawyer customer what all this world and asset can do to an organization but the old traditional way of budgeting does not take cognizance of them or even recognize them at all strong leadership knowledge intellectual capacity and capital strong brand names strong brand presence 
skilled people and many more were overlooked. We had equally touched on what types of budgeting in the traditional way his or rather her types of budgeting and we may mention of the functional budgets, departmental budgets, we may mention of the top down and the bottom up, periodic budgeting, rolling budgets, incremental budgets, zero based budgets, activity based budget. We made mention of budgetary control that is comparing the budget with the actual. We've made mention when we are talking about budgetary system, we must talk about budget manner, which is the list or a book comprising series of instruction and procedure to follow in budgeting exercise and activity. And also we touch on master budgets. That is, for example, the functional budget, the departmental budget will be compiled together to form a, a book that we can call the master budget so we've made definition of what a budget is and we said that a budget actually is a financial and quantitative statement that must be approved prior to a defined period in which is is goal and aim and objective are to be actualized that is what a budget is and Beyond budgeting model actually is a new model that actually builds on the tradition and make better input and meta better performance, better delivery than that of traditional way of method. So we can call beyond budgeting model to be responsibility model because it sees operational managers as key in the budgeting and execution rather than harm share executive budgeting what they really are not too involved in so we said that beyond budgeting model is a responsibility model is an agile model that is it's allow us to be responsive to be fast in responding are equally to be very proactive also we can term it uh, as it helps management transformation and uh, innovation it helps in management transformation and uh, innovation because the first division of the 12 principle of beyond budgeting model actually deals with management transformation mindset changing organizational behavior and the like so it, it can be called management transformation model and innovation model and basically the question that beyond budgeting hacks which traditional budgeting method we know hacks is that can value be created if we have this cost expended that is the question. Would this cost create value? Rather than the traditional way of budgeting that we ask whether it's in the budget or not. Uh, if it's not in the budget, no matter how good the idea may be, no matter how valuable it may be, it's going to be dropped. I want to believe you received value from Jijin Sash Associates today. Being Galatunji FCA is my name. We are going next to produce video on standard costing under variance analysis under performance management. If you are just viewing us, why won't you consider to subscribe so that you can receive notification anytime we upload new video and tell a friend to tell a friend don't forget to share and comment and you can easily reach us we have value to life gjmsa associates we have value
their business.